guys, Bob Gar here. It's ten dollar attack time today. We're looking at ten dollar Thopter Sword combo in modern. It's ten dollars and thirty three cents online, a hundred and one dollars and nineteen cents in paper. Uh, let's get into the the various components of the combo first. The big namesake of the combo is Sword of the Meek and Thopter Foundry. So what happens is Thopter Foundry lets you sacrifice a non token artifact. For one mana to create a 1-1 one, one blue Thopter artifact creature token with flying and you gain a life. And then Sword of the Meek says, equipped creature gets plus 1 plus 2, equip 2. Whenever a 1-1 one, one creature comes into play under your control, you may return Sword of the Meek from your graveyard to play, then attach it to that creature. So basically the combo is you can pay a mana, sack Sword of the Meek to Thopter Foundry, the sword goes to the graveyard, the 1-1 one, one comes into play, and then you can return the sword to play attached to that 1-1 one, one, and repeat the process. So you can, as, mu as much mana as you have, you can gain that much life and put in that many 1-1 one, one artifact Thopter tokens. And so then there's one more potential combo piece in the deck, and that is Time Sieve. We run this as a 1-of, and that is a blue-black artifact with tap this and sacrifice 5 artifacts. Take an extra turn after this one. So as you can kind of see, uh, we can make Thopter tokens for one mana a piece. In order to take infinite turns, all we really need to do is have these three pieces out, spend five mana, tap Time Sieve, take another turn, and we can just do that infinitely. And eventually we'll get more than five mana and we'll be able to accumulate Thopters as we do that, and eventually we'll be able to run over our opponent. So this is kind of an infinite turn lock that's pretty easy to assemble and pretty easy to execute, assuming that nobody is screwing with us. This deck is a little susceptible to hate, so... Graveyard Hate obviously beats Sword of the Meek, uh, if they have something like Rest in Peace, or even just Relic of Progenitus, they can set it off when the sword hits the graveyard and, and get your sword that way. So they can turn off your combo with stuff like that. And then these are also activated abilities of artifacts, so Stony Silence also hits all of them. So that's the one disadvantage of the combo, is a lot of the hate that exists in Modern does hit the combo that we have here. But it's a pretty powerful combo, and we're going to see, well, as you can see, we don't run full play sets of these. We're going to look at how to find the combo next. So we have some typical cantrippy cards, four sleight of hand, because we need a one mana drop, and that's the cheapest good uh, searching one mana drop that we could get. Uh, Seagate Oracle, jumping over to the other side, basically has the same effect of as Sleight of Hand, but it's on a 1-3 three for 3 mana. So basically you get to Sleight of Hand and you get a little bit of uh, block around the ground, and potentially damage I guess too, although you'll very rarely be swinging in with him. It's mostly just to, to slow down aggro decks and then also have a Sleight of Hand effect tacked onto it. Thirst for Knowledge, as you'll see, we run quite a few artifacts. Obviously the ones in the last slide are all artifacts. Uh, we're running a few more also, and that will give us things to discard to Thirst for Knowledge, so it ends up being a, a draw 2 instead of a draw 1. Uh, but the more important thing is you draw 3 and then you discard 2, so it's really good filtering. You get to search towards the pieces you need uh, and get rid of the things in your hand that you don't need. And the final one, Muddle the Mixture, is a basically, for us, it's a 3 mana tutor. We can occasionally keep it up as a counter target instant or sorcerer if we need to, but more often than not we'll be spending 3 mana at sorcery speed to transmute it and search our library for any of our pieces. If you notice, Sword of the Meek, Time Sieve, and Thopter Foundry are all two mana cards, so you can transmute for any of the three pieces that you need. So this, this basically is just the perfect tutor for us. So after the co finding the combo, we have to worry about staying alive till we actually get enough mana to do it. So that combo is pretty cool, but we have to spend a lot of mana to search it out. And we also have to spend a bunch of mana to get all the pieces on the board and then generate enough Thopters to do the infinite turns combo or just generate enough Thopters to run over an opponent and wins. A lot of times it'll just win fair. And so how do we do that? Well, we have a turn two play in Wall of Omens that uh, is, a, is a wall that'll block our opponent for a while and draw us an extra card. That also helps us dig slightly. We have Mana Leak to keep them from playing spells a little bit. This also helps us protect our combo when we're playing it out a lot of the time. Then we have Day of Judgment. Day of Judgment is the big one. Uh, if we're against aggro, a lot of times we'll just have to search to this. Uh, obviously you can't transmute to it, but you can use your dig spells to try to find one and that will clear your aggro opponent's board and hopefully keep you in the game against aggro decks. And next, the artifacts. So this is the, the last slide of the non-land cards in the deck. We're running three Talismans of Dominance and three Talismans of Progress. They're pretty much the same thing. One is blue-black and one is white-blue. You can tap them for a man of the appropriate color, but it costs you one life, or you can tap them for colorless for free. These are useful both to ramp us up. Sometimes we'll need to ramp up to our creature wipe fast. Sometimes we'll just need to ramp up so we can create more tokens or transmute for a piece and play it on the same turn or, or whatever we need to do. Uh, it is somewhat of a mana-hungry deck, even though most of the spells in it by themselves are cheap. 
Uh, so this that helps with that. And also, like I was saying, it's these are the extra artifacts that we can discard to Thirst for Knowledge, which it's very useful for, too. And in a super bad pinch, if we need to fix for mana, you can also transmute for these, although usually that's not where you want to be. That's only the case if you're like, well, if I don't wrath next turn, I lose the game, and I don't have enough white mana to wrath or something, and I have enough mana to transmute for it and play it, and then next turn we can wrath or something like that unlikely situations then our land uh there's a bunch of decks so our land base is very cheap we're running six planes nine islands and two swamps for our basics islands is what we need by far the most all almost all of our spells have that planes is second most we have day of judgment which takes two we have wall of omens which takes one uh swamps at two because the only thing that uses it is time sieve in fact swamps probably should just be at one now that i think about it maybe up either islands or, or planes by one but it's fine uh, Arcane Sanctum is a tri land, so it comes into play tapped. We usually can afford to have a land come into play tapped in the deck, but it does kind of suck that that happens. But yeah, it's perfect fixing for us, and we do have some mana requirements on getting blue and white that we don't want to shriek on too much. So it's it's important to have the triple the triple mana fixing. I guess you could replace it by a, a white blue dual land and probably be okay. But the the once in a while where you really need the time sip, it would suck. And then finally, our sideboard, three Ghost Quarters against Tron, other other decks that care about lane like Valakit, three Tormod's Crypt, get rid of opponent's graveyards uh, if, they're, if they're playing a graveyard deck that we have to interact with, two Fragmentize, Fragmentize is the cheapest artifact in enchantment destruction that we can get, but it does have some drawbacks, it's not instant speed. Uh, we're running one Disenchant, which is similar to Fragmentize, except it doesn't have the converted mana cost restriction, and it is instant speed. And the other really nice thing about it is if we just absolutely need a Disenchant for some reason, which isn't super common, but, you know, imagine a uh, Ensnaring Bridge or something. We can tutor for Disenchant with Muddle the Mixture, or one of Disenchant, and use that to uh, destroy whatever artifact is really, or, or enchantment that's really keeping us from winning the game. Uh, three negates. In a lot of matchups, negate will just be better than mana leak because, you know, if they get enough mana, mana leak becomes bad. And then three go for the throats. This is good against aggro if we really need to interact quickly and keep our opponent off features. It can be good against some combo decks too that are creature based that, that go for the throat will kill. Uh, but yeah, we want it in. Obviously, it doesn't work well against things like affinity that have a lot of artifacts, but against a lot of other decks, it's a very, very good kill spell in black. So that's the deck. Uh, I think it has a relatively good chance against most decks. It can sometimes be too slow against aggro, but once it stabilizes, it tends to do very well. It has a little bit of trouble with control. If you don't draw your counter spells, getting your full combo out can be a little tricky. But overall, I think it's it's a pretty strong deck, and I'm excited to see how it does. I'm going to go play some matches. I hope you watch, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, Bobgar here playing some $10 Thopter Sword Combo in Modern, where... Uh, Oh, we have most of our colors here. We are Esper colors in general. I think this is a keepable hand. Not great, but we have a Day of Judgment to slow them down. A Thirst for Knowledge and a Sleight of Hand to find some pieces. So let's keep it and see how this goes. This deck definitely has some disadvantages. It gets hit by a lot of hate cards. But if it doesn't get hit by hate cards, it can be pretty powerful. It looks like we're up against uh, Affinity. Which isn't exactly... Oh, we got our first combo piece. Affinity's not exactly what I'd want to be up against, but we do have the advantage of that. Well, please just be the sword in this. That'd be pretty good. Nope, we got a mana leak. I have an option between a mana leak and a mana leak. Which one should I take? I'll take the mana leak. I'm choosing the mana leak. It's my choice. Um, I mean, we're going to get to Day of Judgment probably turn 4 if we want to. Or, well, maybe turn 3 if we want to, but we'll, we'll be able to Day of Judgment eventually with this hand. Um, we have one piece of it. We also have the mana leak to slow him down a little bit. Spring leaf drum, sure. He's dumping his hand. It's going to make the day of judgment pretty good when we do get it off, which is nice. We still, even with it, with the less we can assemble the combo, we could still easily lose, but you know. Well, Steel Overseer is going to be a little scary. Another Day of Judgment. Well, so I think playing Talisman down here is right. Now we really want an untapped land next turn so that we can Day of Judgment, hopefully. If not, oh, uh, yeah. 
And basically, if we don't get that, I think we're probably going to lose. But if not, I will probably hold up Mana Leak and then Thirst End of Turn. I guess the other option is I probably should. I should if, if we don't draw land, I need to play down Talisman to hold up Mana Leak. That's probably what will we end up in. Okay. Put a plus one, plus one counter on everything. He doesn't swing for that much yet. So it's not so bad. Uh, the Ink Moth Nexuses will be a problem, although. The Thopter Foundry combo will pretty successfully take them offline, which is nice. Um, but yeah, that'll do a bunch of damage to me and make my life tricky. Okay, so I take three in fact, which is kind of the scary part, and then four normal damage, which I mean, is also scary. He's doing pretty even between them. Untap land, nope. Um, I think I play down a Talisman and then pass. Hold up Mana Leak, and then next turn I Day of Judgment no matter what, basically. This has been an awkward draw, unfortunately. Uh, we definitely would have rather, obviously would have rather hit our combo, but also we would have liked to have keep, kept getting lands. The Talismans are nice, but you don't really want quite as many of them. Sure, place down Mem Knight. Does he fire up both Ink Moth, Moth Nexuses here? That puts me under some serious pressure if he does. I suspect that's what he does. Oh, I should have probably just countered the Memnite, although I guess he would have been able to pay for the Mana Lake, but he probably wouldn't have bothered to. Well, that was my fault. I should have countered that. Not that it's super valuable. Three, so seven. I think he just wins here, actually, doesn't he? Man, I didn't even think about that. Uh, Yeah, he's got me. Well, that is how to not beat Affinity. Man, I thought we actually had that game. All we needed was a land in, in the first like three or four draws, and we just didn't get one. All right, well, Fragmentize comes in. Uh, what else is good here? Let's take out some Dig. I think Seagate Oracle, eh, actually it's not really that good because it doesn't block from the ground. <laughs> Destroy target, non-artifact creature, well that one's not very good. Um, yeah, the Fragment Ties are the only ones that are good. I need to cut one more thing. Let's cut a Talisman, although I do need... If I cut a Talisman, I should cut the um, black one, which is Dominance, I believe. I think this looks pretty good. Alright, well, let's see if we can do better than that. Oh, I never said hell. Oh. Hello, good luck. Got to do that. I'm bad. Alright. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, that was that was rough. I If I had countered that other card, I would have lived for one more turn, which would have been pretty nice. Well, this has a lot of what I need, but it doesn't have the land, so I guess I mulligan. And this one, I think I gotta keep. Uh, this one's actually really, really bad, too. I'm gonna bottom that, just because I need blue, and uh, it's not a blue land, so... I think I lose this game, unfortunately. This has been the, probably the worst match I've ever played with this deck. I guess maybe I should have mulliganed one more, but... I don't know, the muddles are really good, but... Blue is our most common mana source, and we just didn't draw it here, so we'll probably just lose to that, unfortunately, which it's not fun. It does happen. You just kind of got to live with it a little bit. Um, and we still have a chance, depends, depending on what his draw is. Um, doesn't even have another one drop. That's interesting. Well, that was <laughs> great. <laughs> this is absurdly weird luck. And by luck, I mean bad luck, obviously, but this is just an absurdly weird draw. Uh, I get to draw another card. Yeah, well, that's a land. That's not so bad. It does give me blue. I mean, if he's ridiculously slow, we have a chance. We just need one more blue land and three or four more turns against a deck that usually kills you on turn three or four. But, you know, it, it could happen. we just got to keep our, our hopes up and our head in the game. Um, What does he have here? Plays down. It's for black. If he wants to use that for mana, he has to tap his Memnite, obviously. A little confused about what he's doing. Taps for black. Taps for blue. He plays... Oh, he has Insole Artifact. Sure. Well, uh, that's a mana leak that I cannot play until next turn, so that's not super good. I'm going to be taking five bashes here for a little while. It's, I mean, 
blocking him with my wall of omens makes some sense, but I don't think I'm I'm not in a rush to do that, so. Okay, he gets in, sure. Take it. Well, as much as my draw is really bad, apparently his was too, although he didn't mulligan at all. Oh well. That's actually actually that's definitely what I didn't need. I was gonna say, oh now I have more mana. It's like, oh, I needed blue though. I run way more blue than anything else. Um, this is just a bad draw. I do run a little bit more white than black. Black is the very splashy color because the white I do have wall of omens and uh... yeah, I guess I'll mana leak it. Maybe he has something better to play too, but okay, get in for five. Yeah, this is this draw is absurdly unlucky. Okay. I draw a planes. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I can't play any card in my hand right now. I think I can play almost any other card in the deck too. Oh well. So this is what happens occasionally uh, with budget decks in general. I'm tempted to bring up the deck just to see what it looks like. I could run quite a few planes. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So I've drawn half my planes and none of my blue. Sure, I'm just gonna take here. Um, I'm gonna have to start blocking him next turn, but hey, I got a blue. Um. I have to muddle. The problem is, in order to win, uh, what do I even muddle for here? So I hit transmute. The problem is, I don't think there's a good solution here. So if I transmute for Thopter Foundry, I can't play it yet because I need double, I need a single blue. So if I do that, if I draw a single blue, I can play Thopter Foundry for two. One, two. Or one, one, these two or something, and then use the blue source that and another one. Oh, I don't even have enough to even do my combo then. Um, I don't even know if I can win this, but I think if I do, it probably involves either Wall of Omens or Mana Leak. I'm just gonna grab another wall here. That doesn't feel great, but they're gonna keep me in the game and keep me drawing an additional card every turn. He's still at six mana, uh, six stuff. Oh, well, that was a good draw. All right. Well, now I don't feel bad blocking him. And then that could stabilize me if he doesn't have anything else. I mean, admittedly, I would have drawn that normally anyway. Sure. Ornithopter seems good. White. Black. What does he have? Clean no painting. Sure. Doesn't have anything to... Doesn't have enough to equip it yet. Seems good though. Okay. So it blocks. Obviously, I'll block this one. Obviously, I can't block the flyer. Unfortunately, I can't both. I mean, I can leave up Muddle the mixture. It's got an Arcane Sanctum. That does make my life a little easier. One, two, three, four. Destroy all creatures. Last turn. I need him to pretty much have. Oh, no, he has that. I guess it still takes him two turns to kill me. Do I sleight of hand here, or do I just muddle right away? I think I'm going to Slate of Hand first, just in case I find a piece of the combo. Fragmentize. Well, that's good. Let's take that one. Um, blue, blue, white. Transmute. Or Sword of the Meek. Place Sword of the Meek. 
And my question is, do I fragmentize signal pest or do I fragmentize cranial plating? The thing about, nice thing about signal pest is it keeps them off mana, so I think that is what I'm going to do now that it really matters. Okay, pass turn. Man, if we win this one, I, I mean, I guess he had a super bad draw too, but if we win this one, I'll be pretty impressed. Oh, he got his land finally. He'll probably be able to dump out something good. Okay, Arcbound Ravenger, sure. Is there another creature? No, you just keeps screaming the building. Sure, that's fine. Um, one, two, three. Let's, uh, yeah, this looks good. Muddle four. Thopter Foundry. Okay. Blue, white, Thopter Foundry. So the only question that I have now is do I fragmentize now or do I fragmentize later? So the advantage to not fragmentizing now is I get one extra creature out. I think I'm gonna fragmentize Arcbound Ravenger now so that he can't put his counters on anything. I think I'm gonna win this game. No, no, I don't know if he has anything that can beat me unless he's running uh, like red and uses Shared Volley or whatever. Not Shared, Shared Volley? The one that is, no, no, Shrapnel Blast. If he's running Shrapnel Blast and he casts it with Glimmer Void, I'm in some trouble. He has another Arcbound Ravenger, sure. Okay. Equips up his Arcbound Ravager. Okay. Don't think I have enough to win this turn. Go to the Meek. Get rid of that. Comes back into play. Yes. Uh, well. I'll do it again. I, I got a little lucky draw on my sideboard there at the end. Needs to put some plus one plus one counters on my guy. It's a May, so he can say no. Oh no, he said no. He didn't want to do it. So right, I'll swing in here. I could transmute and play, but I don't have enough artifacts to sack uh, to make that worth it. So I'll just pass turn and then obviously create a whole bunch of one one sun end of his turn or whenever. And then I can transmute for time sieve and combo off. So pester might sure a signal pest rather sure. Oh I said pester might. As long as he doesn't have a out here. Arcbinder Ravenger, that seems fine. Okay. Oop. Always yield. Yes. Okay, gain a life, always healed, yes. I don't think he has a way to beat this, but we'll find out. Yep. Waiting for him. Okay, play one, crack that. Yep. Now I have to not be sloppy like I usually am. I'll have to swing in first and then sack him after. He gives up. Okay. He didn't even need to see that I had the time sieve combo. Um, but I was going to beat him there. But it took until turn 10, which is really bad. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I run it back. That seems still like the right combo of stuff to have to me. Wow. That was a good game. That was super, I mean, it was a bad game. We both just did nothing for the, oh, that's not quite true. He did a little bit because he can work on zero mana. I just did almost nothing for the first 
10 turns, and, and then we managed to turn the corner. We got the Day of Judgment when we needed the Day of Judgment, so worked out okay. Um, unfortunately, we're not very good against the main lands because the artifact removal that we have is yeah, fragmentized, which is non-instant speed. I think this is an ugly hand, but I think it's actually a keep. We have mana leak, you know, turn two if we want it, and we have a whole lot of sleight of hands. I still don't think we're going to win this game, but I don't know if we can do that much better than this. I mean, obviously, that's not true. We could, we could have the combo in hand or something, but... Or just turn three, Wrath would be pretty good too against in, in most cases. Okay, he's off to a quick start. And turn one, we're just going to slide a hand, hopefully into white mana so that the fragmentize is valuable. Um, well, I could just play Arcane Sanctum and then have fragmentize for next turn. I think I'm not going to. I think I'm going to slide of hand instead. Um, and of those, I'll take the plane because I already have plenty of blue. Blue is last turn we really needed blue. This time we don't we don't need blue. Um, and then depending what he plays here, I could see fragmentize sleight of hand, or I could see just leaving up mana leak. So if he plays something valuable here, I will almost definitely. Oh, Simeon Spirit Guide, what is he doing? This is bizarre. Oh, he just wanted to get down a super quick etched champion, I guess. Protection from all colors, sure. And he got that out. He got that out really quick. He plays Vault Scourge, sure. So he has me on a clock. It's a pretty slow clock. I got a Sword of the Meek too. Does that change how I want to play things? I think it might. So the thing about protection from all colors is it doesn't protect you from the Sword of the Meek stuff. So that there is an argument certainly for... Man, there's an argument for a bunch of lines here. There's an argument for just sleight of handing the heck out of it and trying to draw to my combo. I could see that as a pretty good argument. Uh, or trying to draw to the Wrath. Either of those two would be good. Uh, fragmentizing, I just don't think is worth it. We can't hit this with fragmentize, and those just aren't valuable. Uh, we'll save fragmentize for his cranial plating or a bigger creature. Or I could just slam sword, and then if I slam sword, hopefully I hit it. I don't think that's worth it. I think I want to. And there's a question of whether you leave up mana leak or whether you just say, "Oh, I can fragmentize potentially." Let's just uh, let's just double sleight of hand probably. Uh, I don't think I need another Arcane Sanctum. Unfortunately, it's a lot of land. Come on, Combo Beast or Day of Judgment. Day of Judgment is pretty good here. It's going to be a turn before it's useful, but that might be fine. The only problem is we have to play Arcane Sanctum next turn, so it depends. If he has the Cranial Plating, we're probably priced into... Oh, Ink Moth Nexus is a little annoying. Too. If he has a cranial plating, we're probably priced in. No, he doesn't. Okay. So we can play Arcane Sanctum, either play down Sword of the Meek, or more likely just hold up Mana Leak, because I don't think Sword of the Meek actually does anything for us. So I think. Ooh. Yeah, I still think I play Arcane Sanctum. I think I just pass turn. I think it's better to hold up Mana Leak here in case he gets something worth spending it on or worth using it on. Attacks all, obviously. Turn off all the wields. Leaves that guy back. I guess that makes sense. He can zero damage. What does he have? Anything? Just another alien. Alright, well. Probably should have fired up his ink moth. Um. Well, I day of judgment here. I have to. I'm priced into it, I think. He does have an Ink Moth Nexus, but it'll take a while unless he draws something good for his Ink Moth Nexus to actually take me down. Uh, actually, yeah, no, I can't. He has an Artifact Lane. I was going to say, actually, I can kill this, and that'll kill the Glimmer Void, and that's, that's not actually true. So this time he's a little land flooded, even. And he drew another land. I mean, they're both man lands, so they're both pretty good against me, but... I'm surprised he's not attacking with them. It seems a little weird to me, actually. But okay... Um, let's, 
think I wall of women's first, and then hold up thirst for knowledge. Then I can do it instant speed. Oh well, I have the combo now. Although there's no real reason to play the combo out. Well, I can't. I can't play the whole thing out anyway. Um, I guess it saves me mana next turn if I play it now. Yeah, I'll play out this. Can't really fragmentize anything. Um, yeah, I'll play out the sword. The sword is also the one I care at least if it dies, I guess. I don't know if he has an answer to it or not. He doesn't have an answer in his hand, obviously, because his hand's empty. I will have six through his turn, because I can't do anything in instant speed right now. He has something to do. Well, he just fires up a Ink Moth Nexus. Plays Cranial Plating. Is that what it is? That would be annoying. I mean, I have to fragmentize for it, but it's still pretty. Oh, no, just another Ink Moth. I don't know why he tapped those. That was weird. Maybe he was trying to fake me out. Cranial Plating would have been pretty mean. Alright. Um, oh, no. Oh, he did it. He used the uh, Ink Moth's ability to pump Ink Moths. Got it. Well, Muddle is actually super sweet. Um, don't think I use it here. But that means, can I go infinite next turn? No, I don't have enough mana. I can get close, though. And then I pass turn. I have mana leak if I really need it. Uh, Fragmentize doesn't do me any good here, but... Obviously, I can just make creatures forever. So I, th I, th I feel like I'm probably going to win this. Unless he fires up multiple creatures to attack, I think I just fire up a single chump blocker. That way I can hold up mana leak until end of turn, and I can make more creatures end of turn. I think that's the, the better plan. I mean, alternatively, I could just fire up f three creatures and have them triple block and kill it, but I'm not actually sure that's, that's worth it for me. Without trample, I don't think he's getting through here. Okay, he taps some mana. Steel Overseer, here. Well, that'll be good eventually. Um, I couldn't actually mana leak it, although I forgot to. Pass this dentist turn. Well, I'm gonna do what I do. One. Yep. One. Boop. Always yield. Yes. Boop. Turn and draw another Thopter Foundry. That doesn't really help me. Um, so I have that many now. I think I think I'll just fragmentize this. I think I just pass turn. I mean, if I really need to mana leak something, I don't think there's anything I can actually mana leak. Um, I guess if I really need to muddle something, I could. If he has any, I don't even know if he has that many instants and sorceries though. So I think I just pass and then try to go infinite on my next turn, because I can create four creatures. Unless he puts me in a weird situation, I should be able to create four, next turn, muddle into time sieve. Uh, yeah, he gives up. Sweet! We got there! I did not think we were winning that. We started game two really poorly, but fortunately so did our opponent, and... Game three, uh, he had some good answers, but we ground it out. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, Bobgar here. I just really wanted to quickly say, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you enjoy my content in general and would like to see more of it, subscribe. I'll be coming out with more content in the future. And please leave me comments and let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, both in terms of production and in terms of my play and my deck building and all that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you guys next time.